Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and happy win happy happy Wednesday to you. Welcome to Ingrediology for our Wednesday weeknight dinner. And we're not doing dinner exactly tonight. We are going to be tackling dessert. We don't do desserts too often here on the channel, but I'm excited for this one. I hope that you are as well. We're going to be making the classic Italian tiramisu. Now this is a rum and espresso soaked ladyfinger layered in with whipped mascarpone cheese and egg yolks. It is so rich, dusted with cocoa powder, and the perfect accompaniment to any Italian dinner that you're going to be cooking at home. And it's much more easy than you think it is. I promise. So how are we doing down in chat today, guys? I saw Snake Eye already popping his head in here. What's up, Snake Eye? Feel free to give yourself a shout out, guys. Make sure you're following Snake Eye over on his Twitch channel. He's a maker and crafter, and he is going to be making some smoked beer rings and other accoutrements here over the next month that I'm aware of. So, Snake Eye, feel free to, to plug yourself in chat. I know you don't like talking or bragging about yourself very much. Darth, Darth Halo, hey, 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 what up? Not too much, Darth. It's great to see you. We're just uh, getting ready to cook up a little Italian tiramisu here on stream. Have you ever had tiramisu yourself before? Let me know here in chat. No you. No you. Stop it. Stop it. So how are we doing over in Tastemate? I see we got one view over here. For those of you who are going to be following along with us here on this recipe this afternoon, make sure that you've gone to ingrediology.org and sought out our class guides tab. Under that, you'll see our tiramisu recipe guide where we have, where we have an equipment list as well as the recipe itself. It also functions as a shopping list, which is pretty handy, and nutritional information down at the bottom. But you don't need to look at any nutritional information. All right, just don't. Just save yourself the trouble. It's not healthy, and I'm not claiming it to be, but some people like to be aware of it, so I have that for you as well. All right? Thank you for the drop on the website, Snake Eye. I appreciate you. And Tastemade viewers, if at any point during the class, if you're cooking along with us, you feel like I, I'm not explaining anything well enough or I'm leaving you behind, please. Just shout out in chat. I try and keep an eye over here on the chat box. Please do be aware that we go out on four different platforms here simultaneously, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Tastemade with our free cooking classes. So if I don't see your question immediately, understand there's a delay and I'm running four different chats at the same time. So I apologize in advance if I'm skipping over anybody. Just shout out one of the mods. Shout out at Tef, shout out at Snake Eye, do what you want. Now, We've had a fun week over here at the Shear household because we have family in town. My mom and dad are visiting from Ohio slash Indiana. They've been here for a couple of days now taking care of me. Guys, I've had four grandparents for coverage here over the past couple of days. I swear, I think I've gotten like two weeks of work done in the first three days of this week <laughs> that I normally wouldn't be able to. So big thank you to my mom and my dad for coming out here. I know they miss Remy so much. This is the first time they've been able to visit him since he was born. Well, after he was born, back in like November when he was only a couple of weeks old. And uh, Maya, has he grown quite a bit. Who else we have joined us in Tastemade? Give us a shout out. Say hello to everybody here. I know you guys are shy. You're so shy over on Tastemate. So I'll let you get set up. I'll let you do your thing. Uh, and let's talk a little bit about the ingredients that we're gonna need this afternoon for this recipe. Down here on the board. Oh, hey, look, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it, guys. I'm, I'm not gonna do the stinger transition. Ha ha, I didn't screw it up. Here are most of the ingredients that we are gonna be using today in our tiramisu. First off, we have one and a half cups of sugar, we have a 12 ounce package of lady fingers, four eggs of which we're only gonna be using the yolk, which is why I put them in a double bowl right here. So that way the whites can go in one bowl, the yolks can go in the other bowl. We have four tablespoons of Dutch processed cocoa powder. High quality cocoa powder is good. I mean, you can use Hershey's or whatever, but you know, you know, I like being fancy, all right? Speaking of being fancy, I got some 72% uh, cacao dark chocolate sticks, which we are gonna be grating over the top of our tiramisu. Once they're all plated and in the mold and chilling, it's a great little topping because you get the little chocolate flakes and it's super dark. But I'm not personally a big fan 
of dark chocolate. I don't like enjoy it just by itself, but it has just enough bitterness to this dish to kind of balance out the very rich custard and mascarpone that we're gonna be making to layer in, to be the mortar in the bricks that are our soaked lady fingers. The lady fingers themselves are gonna be soaked in a mixture of coffee. So I've brewed some extra strong coffee and put in some instant espresso powder just to make it that much stronger here. You really want this coffee flavor to come through. I've heard people say that what makes the tiramisu for them is whether or not that coffee comes through. Also, we're gonna be mixing in a little bit of rum. I got some rum, guys. Look at that. So, I don't think you heard the thing. Ah! Mmm, <laughs> dark rum. Not clear rum, just because we want a little bit more flavor out of our rum here this afternoon. Oh, oh, it smells good. Now, we have a couple of refrigerated items, which I'll show you now. We're gonna have one pound. Oh, let's go back down here to the board. One pound of mascarpone cheese. Mascarpone cheese, I would liken it, if you've never used the product before, closest to cream cheese. It's, it's very similar in texture. It's not like ricotta, where it's kind of chunky, but still smooth. This is a completely smooth texture, and it has a little bit of acidity on the end of it. Now, if you can't find mascarpone at your local grocery store, it's not a huge deal. You can sub out for that cream cheese. It's not gonna be exactly the same, but it's good if you're in a pinch. Now, the other thing I just pulled out of the cooler for us is going to be our 12 ounces of heavy whipping cream. We're gonna be whipping this into, well, whipped cream, and then folding it into our mascarpone and egg mixture that then goes in layers in between our lady fingers. Make sense? I'm gonna leave this in the cooler along with the mascarpone cheese for right now because I want these to remain cold for the time being. Ha ha ha. It helps whenever you're whipping cream if you're doing it cold. If you're trying to whip warm cream, it's much more likely that you're gonna over whip it or it might not whip at all, all right? Da, da, da. Let's get this off to the side. The first thing we need to work on, everybody, is going to be separating our eggs that I mentioned. Is everybody still with me? Welcome to those of you just joining me down here in Tastemade. How's everybody doing in chat over here? Hey, Canadian Gamer Alan, welcome to the stream. Happy Wednesday. Hello, hello. Can we get a shout out for the Canadian Gamer X, please? You're still streaming, right, buddy? Either way, go give him a follow. Appreciate your mise en place. Thank you, Faded Epitaph. Epitaph. I appreciate you being here. But yeah, you gotta, you gotta be organized. I always learned that whenever... What my old job when I was instructing classes IRL with people here in Denver, I would have to make up however many people were in that class, a sheet tray for each. So 10 people, I'd have 10 sheet trays just like that laid out for their recipe so they could have it all organized. There wasn't any measuring going on. And we could move through the class much quicker. It's a skill you pick up and you recognize its importance real early on. How much sriracha in this recipe? Snake Eye, unfortunately, there's no sriracha in this recipe this time around. I'd like to see your version of, well, probably pink tiramisu at that point. Which would you incorporate it in? Would you put the sriracha in with the coffee and the rum and then soak your later figures in that? Or would you add the sriracha in with like your whipped cream and mascarpone and egg yolks? Let me know. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to your professional insight. <laughs> Sometimes on street, I kind of give up. Nobody joins. Oh, heard that. I'm sorry, Canadian. Well, I'm glad you're here. So what is tiramisu, asked Canadian Gamer. Well, Alan, it is a Italian dessert. It comes from the Veneto region in Italy, which is home to Venice and Verona, the setting for Romeo and Juliet in that Shakespearean play. It's in the northern part of Italy on the uh, Mediterranean side of the country. So it, it hails from there. Now there's a little bit of um, the dispute, controversy that goes on around tiramisu. I was reading about it uh, in the week coming up to this class and a couple of people claim to have invented tiramisu. Now there was a couple of stories run here last year because one of the people who claimed that they had invented tiramisu for their restaurant back in like the 30s, the mid 30s, were uh, had just passed away and so they were celebrating him. But if you read into the story, that person kind of copied it off of another chef at a different restaurant. And then you can also find sources that talk about tiramisu, which tiramisu, T-I-R-E, like tire, Tiramisu in um, the uh, Veneto dialect uh, means pick me up. It's like pick, it's a nice little pick me up. 
at the end of your meal. And that got translated into regular Italian and still kind of means a pick me up at the end of your dessert. All right, so that's what tiramisu and its history kind of comes out of. But the dessert itself is a dish that has layers of whipped mascarpone cheese and egg yolk folded with heavy cream and a bunch of sugar. So a very sweet whipped cheese that goes in between layers of rum and coffee soaked lady fingers. Now lady fingers are this little cookie right here. This is a very dry biscuit. It's not as hard as a biscotti. It's almost as if you took and dehydrated angel food cake. Now when you're soaking these, you want to be very careful to just give these a quick dip, just a dunk in the pool, just a rinse off, okay? Don't sit there and one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, because it'll soak up just like a sponge, just like that angel food cake I was talking about. It'll soak up all that rum and espresso, and then it'll just fall apart. So you want enough to soak into the outside layer of your lady fingers, but not enough to make them soggy. You still wanna have a little structure to your cookie because that's gonna make it stand up nicely on the plate. And when you serve it, it'll look like that picture that we had here on our recipe guide and whatnot. Now, I'm gonna be putting all of this into a baking pan right here. Connor, can we get a shout out for Connor, the only deaf guy? Welcome to the stream, my friend. I hope you're having a happy Wednesday and the life is treating you well. Love a bit of food history and I learned something today. Yeah, you're welcome, Faded. That's my goal, every single stream, I'm trying it. All right, we got two viewers over here in Tastemade. Welcome in from Tastemade if you're just joining us. Make sure you're over on ingrediology.org slash tiramisu if you want to follow along with our recipe today. And if you're joining us in Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch, you can just type in exclamation point recipe into the chat box and it'll spit out that link for you. Now, I take all of these videos that I, I record the live streams and I edit them down into uh, much more abbreviated, easier to digest uh, bits of video that you can go back and then watch. But I'm a couple of weeks behind, so expect this one here in the next uh, three weeks probably to be up on my website so that you can uh, not have to watch an entire two-hour stream just to get the really 10 minutes of a recipe steps that you need, all right? Now, I'm, let's see. There we go, okay, sera, sera. So people are going after the recipe down here. We got Maggie in the chat. Hi, Maggie. Hi, okay, sera, sera. Welcome in. All right, are we ready to, to get on to separating our eggs? Down here on the board, I have these two bowls that I talked about earlier. One is gonna be for my egg whites and shells, and the other is gonna be for just my yolks. We're gonna be taking and uh, combining the sugar with our yolks and whipping it inside of our stand mixer. So make sure you have a stand mixer out and ready to go. If you don't, that's okay. You're just gonna have to whip this by hand, both your heavy whipping cream and your egg yolks and sugar. And uh, that's gonna be a good workout, I'm not gonna lie. You're gonna definitely be putting some elbow grease into your tiramisu, but maybe it'll make it taste that much better. All right, one egg yolk done right there. Hold on, let me grab my other camera real quick. Okay. Let's go over to camera six. There we go. It's nice, nice shot we got going on. I'll move down here a little closer. <laughs> Logan, check out what I made. Oh, did you have new, do you have new emotes, Connor? That's awesome, man. I'm on the edge of buying a stand mixer. Is this a sign? This is a sign, Case Rasara. I will tell you, I didn't have a stand mixer in my kitchen for years, and I, you know, I don't want to say it prevented me from doing a lot of things, but it definitely was much more of a chore when I had to do stuff like whipping cream or combining egg yolks like we are here with our sugar cookie recipes. It just makes everything so much easier. Whoop. Be careful with your egg yolks. Don't bust this with the side of your side of your eggshell. <laughs> I know they're expensive. I got the KitchenAid professional version for my stand mixer, but I just saved up for it. Like I, I had gone so many years without a stand mixer in our kitchen. I think I only got one like last year or maybe a year and a half ago that I, I wanted to buy the best I could find out there. And in my opinion, that's gonna be the KitchenAid. That's, that's the standard professional mixer that you'll see in most kitchens, home and restaurants. <laughs> Want some of that egg white off my hands. 
<sighs> nice emotes, baby. That's right, Connor. Congratulations on that, dude. That's a big milestone. Working and watching, says Maggie. Thank you for being here, Maggie. Appreciate you. Everybody say hi to Maggie. Now, we're gonna combine these egg yolks, as I said before, in our stand mixer. Let me set up the camera. Okay, now down here, we're gonna add in our egg yolks and our sugar. But first we're gonna add in the egg yolks and just get them started with a slow beat. Whoop. That's not a very good shot, let's move this closer. There we go. We'll whip these on a medium speed for about a minute, everybody, just to break them up and get them combined. And then remember, over here on the other side of the board, waiting to go in, we are going to have our, whoop. We have our one and a half cups of white granulated sugar, and then we're gonna have one quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. The salt's gonna balance out our sweetness. Salt does that. It, it helps to enhance, but also balance the sweetness in any dessert you're doing. That's why salted caramel's so good. You're also gonna make sure everybody that you have like a rubber spatula or something at hand to easily wipe down the sides of your bowl. Now we're also gonna be using this bowl for our, uh, we're also gonna be using this bowl to whip our heavy cream in, but you don't need to clean it out in between. So don't worry, there's not like an extra cleaning step going on right here. The whipped cream is gonna whip no matter if there's a little bit of residual egg yolk and mascarpone in here or not. So save yourself the hassle and you don't have to run this through the dishwasher in between doing your recipe steps, all right? Into the bowl is gonna go our one and a half cups of sugar and we're gonna whip this until it is a pale yellow color. Take a second, let's scrape the outside here just to get this more combined. Looking a little dry, but don't worry, that's okay. All right, with that sugar combined, we're gonna also add in our salt. Mm -hmm. And four tablespoons of rum. Got that rum. So let's measure this out. Four tablespoons. That's gonna be two ounces or a quarter cup. Oh baby. Now we're only gonna be adding in, well, all day, you need eight tablespoons or half a cup of rum. We're just putting four into our egg yolks and sugar. Now 
Let's give the bowl a quick scrape just to get all this stuff that's along the edges here incorporated with our rum. We're gonna continue beating this for about another 30 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us here on Ingrediology, you are in for a treat, a sweet treat that is. We are making the Italian dessert Tira Misu. If you'd like to follow along with us here at home, you can hit exclamation point recipe in the chat. That'll take you over to our website where we've got an entire recipe guide laid out for you. So you can recreate this easily yourself. Those egg yolks are so vibrant. I know, right? So in Italian, the egg yolk is known as the arancini. I really don't have that many Italian facts, but the one I do, ones that I do, high quality stuff. It is now time, everybody, to get out our mascarpone cheese. So I have one pound, one whole pound of mascarpone cheese down here on the board. Uh, as I said before, mascarpone cheese, you can usually find it in the dairy section or cheese section of most grocery stores, but if you can't, if you just can't find mascarpone, that's okay. You can sub out cream cheese. It's not gonna be exactly the same, but it's a great substitute. It has a similar consistency to mascarpone that your guests won't even be able to tell that you subbed out. So here we go, into the bowl goes our mascarpone cheese. This is what's going to be the mortar holding all of our lady fingers together in our tiramisu. Oh, let's get that wiped off there. Clean out all the rest of this. Ah. There we go. Cool. Now we're gonna raise that bowl back up and continue mixing like a medium speed until this is completely homogenous, totally mixed together and light and fluffy. All right, take it up a little bit. We really want this to be super light. Now, this mixture of mascarpone and egg yolks and sugar and rum is then gonna be folded together with our 12 ounces of whipped cream that we're gonna be whipping here after we get this out of the bowl. So we'll be folding that in gently using one of our rubber spatulas that I had out earlier. And there's a specific way in which I want you to be doing this, okay? And I'll show you when we get there. Let's take a second though and wipe down the edges of our bowl. And you see we got a little bit of egg hanging out over here. A little bit of egg, a little bit of egg over here. And then get underneath the whisk, because sometimes there's just a little pocket that that whisk is not quite touching. So make sure you're cleaning the bottom of the bowl here in between breaking for your whipping. We're gonna continue whipping this for about another minute. Dinner and drinks all in one. You're right about that, Kesara. Nice and light. Ooh, we put a lot of air into this, okay? And that's very important for that nice light texture that you're gonna be looking for. Now we need to transfer this over in the bowl because as I said, we're gonna be whipping up some cream to incorporate with this, okay? So let's get a medium sized bowl out, or actually I've got this large measuring cup hanging out. Uh, uh, uh. 
Yeah, we actually already made dinner, so we, we uh, Kathy was kind enough to do a crock pot meal for us this morning. She started like a hamburger soup kind of thing. So that way we're not just eating tiramisu and we don't have to order out. I know I usually take care of dinner here on Wednesdays, so, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> All right, this we're gonna hold on to. I am gonna give that a quick rinse just so the whisk works better inside of our whipped cream. But all this can get transferred into our measuring cup. Mmm. Mmm, creamy. Creamy beige. Randy, happy Wednesday, my friend. How you doing, buddy? I've not talked in a minute. I hope you're well, my friend. What have you been up to this week? You caught us in the middle of making tiramisu. Guys, I don't know if you know this, but tomorrow, Tef is gonna be here. I'm sorry, not tomorrow, Friday. Friday afternoon, Tef is gonna be here at the Shear household. And we're excited to be hosting him. He's doing his little tour of the U.S. right now. I believe he's in South Carolina, if I remember correctly. And he's going to be flying to us from South Carolina and staying with us for the weekend. I haven't exactly planned out what we're going to do. Where do you guys think I should take Tef? I was thinking, like, Breckenridge. There's fires in Boulder right now. So I think we're probably going to avoid that. But I really want to get him up in the mountains. Tef is our... Longtime mod and friend of the stream here on Ingrediology. Really good dude. And he's never been to the U.S. before. He's from Denmark. Uh-oh. Boy's supposed to be down for a nap, and I'm hearing him. Stay asleep, little boy. Okay. Down here in our bowl. Mm. Ooh, rummy. Mm. Man, that's good. Man, oh man, oh man. Cheryl, welcome to the stream. Million Dollar Highway. Hmm. I'm in Indiana right now. Cherie's dad is in the hospital. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Randy. Tell Cherie we're, we're thinking about her. And I hope you and your family are doing okay. I've received 100 messages a day with... Re oh, <laughs> I was like reading this as if it's a chat thing. Mount Evans open yet? Oh, Snake Eye. That's a good idea. Mount Evans or like Lookout Point? I like that. We should take him up there. I hope he's enjoying South Carolina. We live close and it's a beautiful place, especially near the mountains. I've actually never been to South Carolina, but I believe Megan's family has family in the area. But we've just never, we've never gone down and visited ourselves. Why is, hold on. Burp, burp, burp. I was catching part of the lamp <laughs> right in this shot. Probably and a bit scary if you're on the drop-off side. What? Well, when are you going to visit me? We can do the whole Carolina experience. Ooh, give me some barbecue, Randy. Hell yeah. That sounds awesome. All right. We've already gone ahead. Just to catch up real quick, we've got our mascarpone as well as our egg yolks, 12 ounces of sugar, and four tablespoons of dark rum already whipped together. Now we've emptied out our mixing bowl and we still got a little residue here, but that's not a big deal. That's not gonna keep us from whipping our cream together, which is right here. I got 12 ounces of heavy whipping cream that we are gonna be putting in the mixer and whipping to peaks, soft peaks, okay? Let's go ahead and do that now. Everyone taste made doing okay. I know there's three of you in here right now. I'm glad you're joining us. If you're cooking along, or if you'd like to cook along by watching the VOD later, or maybe one of our edited YouTube videos, just hit exclamation point recipe and chat, guys, and you can cook along with us. 
These cooking classes go out for free every single week, and my entire goal behind this is just to help you be a better cook at home. I know everybody can cook. You can also cook better. That's what these are designed to do. I always like seeing the yearling at the library and Red Rocks. The yearling. Is the yearling a movie shit, case or all? East Carolina barbecue for the win. Now, I like Carolina barbecue because it's mustard. It has mustard base in it, which I really like. I'm a big fan of mustard. I don't like the really ketchup-y Kansas City super sweet barbecue sauce. Now, Kathy, as a matter of fact, Cheryl, got a um, couple of tickets to see Stevie Nicks out at Red Rocks here in May. May 11th, Stevie Nicks is going to be performing in Red Rocks, and she wants to see her so bad. She's in line. I guess she hasn't gotten the tickets yet technically, but she's waiting in line for the pre-sale to go on. So she's going to be, um, she's going to be getting her tickets as soon as possible. But I love concerts out at Red Rocks. I mean, if Tef and I would have done a little pre-planning, maybe I'd be. There's no way they're already playing out at Red Rocks this time of year, though. We had two inches of snow the other day, and we're definitely going to get more. Let's turn up the speed on our mixer right there. I loathe Carolina-style barbecue. Give me that KC. Really? God, God damn it, Randy. Oh, the big chair sculpture with the horse on it. I don't think I've ever been down there, Cheryl. That'd be a, that'd be a visit for me, too. I always went up to fly kites in the space behind the seating. Do they close off access between shows? No, no. Red Rocks is like completely open. It's a public park. You can go up there anytime because I've gone up there just like on, on a weekday and worked out. I've gone and run the stairs down, down there and done like yoga outside and you can run the trails that wind around inside of Red Rock Park. It's really cool. I have a severe dislike of vinegar. The Whatever, Randy. It's like a whole category of food. Ooh. Oh, look at that, guys. That's perfect. See how our whipped cream is holding its shape as we pass the whisk through it? Okay. That's what you want. Also, see how this is smooth on the outside here? I mean, it's not completely smooth, but it's not... I think the, the best descriptor I've heard for over whipped whipped cream would be a sawtooth edge. This is a nice smooth edge. I mean that, right? But if I put my finger through it, it doesn't come off like ricotta or something chunky. It stays nice and smooth. And that's what we're looking for. We don't want this to be over whipped and chunky. We want to incorporate nicely with our ricotta and our egg yolks. So with that whipped, and our mascarpone mixture already put together down here on the board. We need to add a little bit of rum to our coffee and start dipping our lady fingers, all right? So let, where's that measuring cup I have? I have 12 ounces of very strong coffee mixed with, mixed with instant espresso powder. So this is like coffee to the max right here. That, that's what you want to dip your lady fingers in. I'm also gonna be adding a quarter cup or four more tablespoons of this dark rum. Ah. <laughs> well whipped. Where's the, where's the cap for this thing? Oh good, just going and hanging out there are some of my favorite memories. Agreed, Cheryl. <sighs> That's a great park. Beautiful out here. I, there's so many great places to take Teff while we're out here, while he's out here in Colorado, that there's no way you can get like a, even a fraction of it done in something as small as a weekend, especially when we're having to tool around with a baby, you know? So it's gonna be a multiple vehicle trip kind of deal. I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, I'll talk to Teff when he gets here. But I, I think Mount Evans is a good one. Mount Evans open yet? That is the question. That's the question we need to answer here. But the other question we need to answer is, how are you gonna dip your lady fingers? So, get yourself a large bowl. A large bowl would be perfect for this, so. 
I've got this bowl that I used earlier for the sugar. Weep. Damn it, I keep pushing numbers in other boxes. Here we go. That I had the sugar in. Empty some of that in there. And I'm gonna add my mixture of coffee, espresso, and rum. Now we mentioned this earlier in the class, but you should have 12 ounces of Ladyfingers ready to go. I've got two packages right here. All right, these are, it, it, uh, what I was saying earlier was, Ladyfingers are kind of like dehydrated angel food cake. They have the same kind of light and airiness to them, but they're definitely not soft. It's like a cross between angel food cake and biscotti. And they're just gonna absorb this mixture right here really good. Little sponges, little sponges. Deirdre, are you lurking here today? You have been a fantastic taste made follower and I just wanted to say hi. If you were, happy Wednesday to you, my dear. No one said anything over in taste made yet. Ah, Maggie just checked on Mount Evans and she says that it's not open, unfortunately. It opens this year on May 27th, which is Megan's birthday. Now for Megan's birthday, we're thinking about going out and uh, going to see the race. What race am I talking about? The race, the largest racing event in the world, the Indianapolis 500, that takes place in Megan's hometown. I think we're, we're gonna, Kevin is gonna drive the RV back there and we're thinking about doing, doing a stay down in Indy and going to the race. I've never been to the race. It, they have in their family uh, a set of tickets that uh, are really, really good seats. So um, they go every year and I think we're gonna go with four people even though there's only two tickets and just switch out the tickets. We're just like, we're gonna put two people in the spot like halfway through the race, switch it out and then be tailgating and grilling in the parking lot in the RV the entire time. So it's gonna be a good birthday for Megan this year. The race is like the, the 20, is it Sunday the 27th this year? And it, that'll be Megan's birthday directly? Hmm, okay, I don't know, we'll have to look that up. All right. Um, <laughs> Deirdre's here. Yep. Hi, Deirdre. It's good to see you. Uh, now, back down here on the board, we have those lady fingers. What I need you to get is going to be a... Pfft, I'm looking for the baking pan and the camera's literally sitting on top of it off to the side. So I have this baking dish right here, which is just wide enough. I found that these bread pans are really good. In the recipe packet, I know it says a nine by nine baking tin. I don't have one of those. <laughs> I don't have one of those and I put it in the recipe packet. So I don't know what I was thinking. I thought I had a square um, baking dish. If you have a nine by nine, then please use that. But this like bread loaf pan accommodates one of these cookies perfectly. Cause otherwise if you have like an oddly shaped pan or something that's not wide enough for your cookies, you have to like shave off the ends and trim each one before you even soak it and go about building your tiramisu. So something that's the width of the cookies is gonna work really, really well. Now, when we're dipping our cookies, we want to make sure that, you know, before I do that, let me let me get this um, let me get this cheese mixture into the cooler, just to chill up for a little bit, just so it doesn't get too warm to run on us. And then let's go down here to camera six. There we go. Oh, huh, LaCroix, sponsor. <clears throat> the 500 is the 29th. Okay, heard that. So I was saying earlier with our lady fingers, you don't want to soak these. This should, this should not be you're trying to drown your lady fingers in our mixture over here. It's just gonna be a light dunk, just a little blop, blop. All right, and that's gonna pick up enough moisture so that our tiramisu doesn't fall apart because it's so soggy. So we're just gonna go through and start dipping and lining the bottom of our pan with our lady fingers. Now with the lady fingers, these also, kind of like mascarpone cheese, are a hit or miss in most like average grocery stores, like a Kroger or a King Super or a Safeway or something like that. I've found them there before, but it's not guaranteed that they're always gonna be stocked there. You know, it's not like peanut butter. Um, I ended up getting these at a specialty grocery store here in the area called Tony's. I know you can find them more regularly at Whole Foods, which would also be a good bet for picking up your um, mascarpone cheese as well. But um, just, just a little, little fair warning right there. 
We've gotten our first layer of cookies soaked and ready to go. At this point, we need to take a break because we need to combine our cheese and our whipped cream. So let's set that off to the side for a second. And to get a big mixing bowl out. Big Dominican lounge. You want your roomiest mixing bowl because you don't want to have to squash this all together inside of your, um, inside a smaller bowl. It's just gonna be, it's gonna deflate your whipped cream, all right? And we're gonna add our whipped cream in stages to our mascarpone and egg mixture. Ah, oh, cha cha cha, cha cha cha. Gonna wipe off. Use a clean spatula. You know, I'm fancy like that. Okay, in goes our mascarpone, egg yolk, rum, and sugar mix. Now we're gonna combine this with the heavy whipping cream by folding gently. I've added in all of our mascarpone cheese mixture. And now I'm gonna add in about a third of my whipped cream mix. As I do this, I'm gonna show you proper folding technique, okay? If any of you have ever made like a mousse, you might be familiar with this. But taking your spatula and going under Underneath our custard mixture, or our cheese mixture, we're gonna take and just fold this together gently. There should not be any pressing down or whipping or sideways going stuff going on. We're just trying to maintain the light, airy texture by gently folding this together, okay? Sergeant Miller, you had me at rum. Hell yeah, Sergeant Miller. Welcome to the stream. Happy Wednesday to you, my friend. We are about three quarters of the way through our tiramisu recipe right here. We're just assembling our lady fingers and our mascarpone cheese. Now this is not entirely combined. I still got some streaks of whipped cream, but we've got more whipped cream to go. So I don't want to mix this completely and then have to continue folding, just beating more air out of it. I so I added in a third at first. We're gonna add in the remaining two thirds of our whipped cream into the bowl, fold this together, and then we'll be scooping this out and layering it in between our lady fingers. I like cooking with bourbon. What's your favorite bourbon dish to make then, Sergeant Miller? You got any good tips? I really, I made, uh, well, I made bourbon Bloody Marys the other day. Uh, that was one thing I used bourbon. Oh, you know what I did bourbon with? I made French toast, sourdough French toast the other day, but the custard that I was making and dipping the, to the bread in before I cooked it, I put in vanilla as well as a shot of Buffalo Trace. That was heavenly. Ah! Bourbon Bloody Mary, yeah, yeah, why not? more flavor right there. There's a local company out here in Denver called The Real Dill, like dill pickle. And they make a Bloody Mary mix that I really, really like. And we did, we just used that mix and then did bourbon. Cause we didn't have any vodka and I'm not really a liquor drinker in general. Like the same bottle of vodka will sit around our house. It has sit around our house for years in the freezer, literal years. So I didn't feel like going out and buying a bottle of vodka for like the two shots that I need to make Kevin and I a Bloody Mary in the morning. So we just swapped it out. There is a local restaurant, Cheryl. I prefer you only using bourbon. I'm not a drinker either. Never use anything else, really. Ooh, smoked bourbon Bloody Mary? Snake Eye, I like the way you're talking. Bourbon in sweet potato puree, says Deirdre over here on Taste Made. That is a good tip as well. Ooh. Deirdre, you're all about your sweet potatoes. Do you grow your own sweet potatoes? You're a sweet potato fanatic, my dear. I don't hate it. I might try using some beer and dogs at some point. Oh, what you need to do, Miller, is take and boil your bratwurst in beer. And then grill them. That's how you're supposed to do it. When you want to boil some cased meat in alcohol, that would be my, my way of doing it. Guys, see how much this has lightened in color? 
and how much airier it is since the addition of our whipped cream. Mmm. Yes. It's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. So satisfying. I probably shouldn't hit that too much. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Now, we also have the lady fingers we've already done. I'll be sure to try that. You do. You do that. Everybody, if you'd like to help support and make Ingrediology possible, then we have our Ko-Fi page, which you see down here in the little corner. If you go visit that link, you can help contribute to grocery costs, as well as website upkeep, and the software that I have to use to edit my YouTube videos. All that stuff goes right back into the business and uh, makes Ingrediology available for free to everybody else. So if you, if you really appreciate our classes and you afford to do so, thank you in advance. Short plug, back down here on the board. We're gonna layer in some of our mascarpone. Oh, let's, let's go down here to six. This is just such a better camera. I'm sorry. I've decided I'm going to be getting two. I'm going to be getting the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And I already have the 12 Pro Max. But um, I'm going to hang on to my phone that I have now that you guys are watching on. And not um, trade it in. So then I have two like really nice cameras. And I'm not paying an arm and a leg for them. I'm just, you know, continuing to keep up with my phone bill. And because we have an upgrade, we get an upgrade to our cameras on stream. How about that? So we put down a nice inch thick layer of our mascarpone cheese into our, into our bread pan. It should be a nine by nine, but it is a bread pan. What we're gonna do now is I have some cocoa powder. This is that high quality Dutch processed cocoa powder I was talking about earlier. You're also gonna need a little sieve. You know what? I have a smaller sieve than this. Why don't, why don't I use that? Because otherwise, with that sieve, I'm going to be getting that all over the countertop. I just need my baby sieve. Hey, baby sieve. Welcome back. Yeah. Now let's take about a third of our cocoa powder. I'm just going to shake this gently over the top. layer of chocolate all the way through. Mm. All right, so that's layer number one. That can go back on top of our cocoa powder and the ramekin off to the side. Haven't tried to grow them, but not a bad idea. I hear sweet potatoes aren't that easy to, easy to grow. But more power to you. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you not to do it. Please do. And let me know how, you, how the results are. Now, it's time to dip some more lady fingers, everybody. So we're gonna start by just giving this the old one Mississippi down there in our mixture of coffee and espresso and rum. Whoop. Has anybody ever made tiramisu before at home? Just curious. Just want to gauge the audience right here. Oh. Oh, baby. I think I could fit one more lady finger here at the end if I squeeze it. I haven't, but I wouldn't mind trying anything at least once. That's the ticket. That's the attitude I want you to have. Those are the best guests to serve. Not people who say I hate vinegar categorically. Randy. Randy. All right, let's get another layer of Marsco down here on our tiramisu. Now, this is going to be our final layer. And if I was using a 9x9 nine nine pan, I would have used all my mascarpone cheese. But since I'm using this little baking dish, I'm only going to be using about two-thirds of it. So I'm going to fill this straight up to the top. I'm going to get as much of that mascarpone on there as possible and just spread it out. 
don't want to waste this stuff. I'll probably be eating it with a spoon later on, I'm not gonna lie. I'm sorry for all my mmms into the microphone, but I just can't help it as I'm making this, guys. I've, I, I've not made this dessert in so long, and I'm really, really looking forward to it. Especially since we got my mom and dad here. We got company to enjoy it. Mmm. Spackle that thing down. And then we're going to do another dusting with our cocoa powder. All right? A snake eye. Oh, oh, oh baby. Joe, I'm trying to fill in all these all these little gaps and edges, okay? There we go. Looking good. Looking good. That's for Philip if he's here. Look at that. Oh. Now, we're not entirely finished, everybody. We've got one more step here, and that is to take this high quality dark chocolate that I've got and grate this over the top into little shavings. Just little shavings. And for that, I've got a microplane. I put a box grater in the recipe guide on the website because I think that's more ubiquitous in people's kitchens. You just want to be using the smallest holes on your box grater, but a microplaner is going to be even better. It just makes this like, like this. Excuse me. It just makes like this little dusting. Very finely grated chocolate. Let me even go over here to six. Better shot here. Oh, there we go. And let's take a, a damp, I almost said the M word. Almost said the M word, everybody. That was a close one. Just a damp paper towel, not paper towel, a damp towel. And let's clean up the edges right here, okay? That's satisfying. you're holding your breath just as you're holding your breath <laughs> or that you've been holding your breath the entire time you're doing something and then you're out of breath that was me just wiping this down mm. oh. Oh, 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 oh looks it's gonna turn out amazing not gonna lie thank you Miller I think it is too I, I've made this a couple of times I know it's gonna turn out amazing then Miller we got the recipe up on the website my friend please Feel free to head over there and check out everything you need. You can find most, if not all of it, at a regular grocery store, depending if they have mascarpone and lady fingers, you know. All right, now, we're gonna get this covered up with plastic wrap, everybody, and this requires at least two hours of chilling in the cooler before it's ready to serve, at minimum. All, I would really recommend 24 hours. Personally, we'll be doing it in, in like four hours because we'll have it for dessert tonight after dinner. But the longer it chills, the better it's gonna set up on the plate after you cut it, all right? You know what, I'm gonna do a caterer's wrap on this. Just so it's as secure as possible. What's a caterer's wrap, chef? Well, that's when you wrap the entire container and everything together. Just a little bit more. It's a cur. I'm gonna go this way first. Always buy your plastic wrap in 
this roll. You can order these offline, all right? I know you probably can't find these at your local grocery store, everybody, but this giant restaurant size of plastic wrap is so much easier than saran wrap or any of that other crap that, that you can only buy at the grocery store. I hate it. I hate working with it. It's the worst. This one has like a nice little cutter on it. It's 2,000 feet of plastic wrap. I bought I bought one of these like a year and a half ago, and I'm still using it. I'm probably halfway through it. This means I've used 1,000 feet of plastic wrap. Go me. <laughs> oh, did you learn that, Snake Eye? Ha! Whew. There we go. All right, with this wrapped, we're gonna bring this over to the cooler, toss it in, like I said, make sure that you chill it for at least two hours. I would recommend 24, okay? So into the cooler we go. Now everybody, I need you to grab that Myers rum real quick. One last thing. Hmm? I guess, so I was reading today and traditionally in this dessert, they will use Marsala wine, like a fortified wine instead of um, rum or dark rum like this. So I know it's not 100% authentic to this region in Italy, but um, I do like the taste of the rum. I think it goes well with the espresso. Really compliments the coffee. The wine, I was like, eh, should I change it? And I decided not to in the end. But cheers. Salute to you guys. To a delicious dessert. <sighs> All right. We got it from Amazon. Don't have a Costco close. Try it. Thank you for that tip. If you've got the link on Amazon, would one of the mods mind giving him permission to drop that in there? That'd be super helpful. Go get that plastic wrap, everybody. Don't use saran wrap. Saran wrap's for losers, okay? But try it. Happy Wednesday to you. I'm glad that you're here. Oh, I think ours is Kirkland. Oh, Costco has it. Interesting. Huh. All right. Uh, so, everyone, this class was designed to only be an hour long, and look at us. We're at 3.57. Look at us. Who'd have thought? Not me. But here we are, your tiramisu should be in the cooler, chilling up right now. I want to make sure that we're not leaving anybody behind. So over here on Tastemade, please throw any questions in the chat if you have them. I hope I've made everything as straightforward as possible for you. Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, shout it out. You got questions for me? Hmm, all right. Quiet, subdued here today on stream. And plus an hour, we're barely going, you know, it takes, it takes a little while for people to show up and really for you to gain some audience, but that's okay. That's okay. With our family here in town, I wasn't planning on streaming all night anyways, but uh, make sure that if you want to see more of these classes, you're going to ingrediology.org slash recipes, okay? That's um, not slash recipes, just ingrediology.org. And on our homepage, we have all of our upcoming classes. I've been working on our April classes. I am 90% done posting those right now. We're gonna be putting them here on Tastemade as they get put up on the website as well. So for our Tastemade friends, make sure you're keeping an eye out for that. Coming up in April, we're gonna be having saucy samosas, creme brulee. We're gonna be doing a special stream for only our members and supporters here. So anybody who's signed up on Ko-Fi or who's a subscriber on Twitch or who uh, helps support us financially over on Tastemade, April 9th, all right? Saturday, April 9th, 3 p.m. Mountain Time, we're gonna be making chicken tinga tostadas. Now this is gonna have a refried black bean mixture over the top, which you'll be making yourself. We'll make our own chicken tinga and we'll be putting that on top of crispy tostada shells, top with cilantro, fresh diced onions, and a little cotija cheese, which is like a case so fresco. What just happened? Jessica Kate, what are you doing? Jessica, thank you so much for dropping that sub. I appreciate you, my dear. Keep an eye out in the Discord, everybody, if you are a subscriber so that you know or you have the link on April 9th. This special class, I'm calling it Family Meal, is going to be taking place on April 9th, as I said, but it's going to be taking place over Zoom. 
okay? So this is going to be a face-to-face -face thing. I'm going to be chatting with you. We'll hang out, get to know each other a little bit better. And if you're interested in that, make sure you're supporting the stream here. Um, after the, eight, the 9th of April, we're going to be doing... What are we going to be doing? We're going to be doing a um, Argentinian asado. So Argentinian steak chimichurri. I just finished that recipe packet today. And then I'm playing around with what we're going to do on 420. So give me some ideas down in the Discord of what you might like to see. I, I've got a couple of ideas already, okay? Um, thank you, Jessica. I hope you all are well. Thanks, Jessica. Can we get a shout out for Jessica Kate 666 as well, by the way? She's another food and drink as well as gaming streamer here on Twitch. And just a lovely person who's been so good to us here over the years. Thank you for joining us from the Shire. The Shire. All right. Um, that, that's going to do it for today, guys. I appreciate you. Um, taste mate, I'm assuming no one else. Ah, here we go. Are you doing a carbonara class? I bought the bucatini already. That's so funny. I made my carbonara with bucatini the other night, too. I was practicing it, Deirdre, just for that carbonara class. So it's... I'm mulling some things over, okay? Um, we'll talk about them here at a later date, but it's either gonna be carbonara or something else here on the 20th of April, all right? And if we push carbonara off the menu in April, it'll be showing up in May, all right? It's already on the docket. So like I said, keep your eyes out for that class. We will be doing carbonara. I've got a great recipe for carbonara. It's a family favorite. I made carbonara for all six of us here on Sun. no, Monday night. Monday night we did carbonara. It was really good. All right, let's get ready to raid out here on Twitch. Who do we got online? I don't even know. We are barely online today. This is not like a normal stream. Hold on, I'm checking who we got. Who we got available. We got Call Me Chef G. All right, so we're going to go raid Call Me Chef G. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. All right, guys, you have been absolutely lovely. I appreciate you coming out. Don't forget to subscribe here on Ko-Fi. Thank you to all of our subscribers. I keep saying Ko-Fi, it's Ko-Fi. Thank you for subscribing via Ko-Fi and to all of our supporters across our platforms. We'll see you again here next week on Ingrediology for our Wednesday weeknight dinner. We're gonna be making some saucy samosas, saucy samosas. But those are little pyramids of fried dough stuffed with peas and potatoes. We'll be making a yogurt sauce and a mint chutney to go along with those recipes on the website. Go check it out. And uh, we'll see you here next week. Peace.